What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here again. And I just climbed to the top of this mountain and there's a lovely view out here. So I thought I would um, make a quick video uh, while you guys enjoy the view. Uh, so today I want to talk about uh, substrate thickness and also uh, spawn to substrate ratio. So all about those things. I don't think it should be that long. I don't have all that much to say about it, I think, but uh, I'm going to be talking about obviously core lovers. Basically, uh, before we answer this question, we need to we need to discuss what exactly is a substrate in mushroom growing. And you know, it could be numerous things. Let's say that the spawn is the food, and the substrate is the water and the structure. It's like the skeleton. Now, of course, it could be food also if you're using nutritious substrates. But for, for the examples here, I'm going to be talking about just straight core or some non-nutritious substrate like CVG because that's what most people are using to grow and that's completely sufficient for core lovers. So I'm going to be talking about that. So basically, uh, with core, with a non-nutritious substrate, it's basically just water and structure. It's the bones and the water. And the importance of water obviously cannot be uh, overstated enough in this hobby because mushrooms are majority water and they need lots of water to grow, as simple as that. Uh, so of course, nutrition, you know, mushrooms really don't need that much nutrition. They're very efficient. Uh, you know, like just, it's a, it's incredible how many flushes you can get from one micro quart of grains. You know, it's just insane. You could just keep, they'll keep fruiting for months if you let them. I mean, obviously you're not, you're gonna get less and less fruits, but it's gonna keep fruiting for months, you know, uh, which is insane. So, uh, water is very important. Uh, nutrition, of course, mushrooms can make uh, available nutrition last a very long time. It's quite impressive. So basically, uh, following that logic on the importance of water, what basically core does is it allows your mushrooms to flush. Um, you know, that's why we mix it with core, uh, because they need the water to grow. So obviously following the more core, the more substrate that you have, the more the the larger it can flush or the potential as long as you got enough spawn so there's a good ba there, there's a balance right especially with non-nutritious substrates there's a balance between um you know like there, there's like the ideal amount of uh nutrition to substrate because if you have too little nutrition and too much substrate you know uh, the mycelium is going to use a lot of energy colonizing it it's going to take a long time uh to fruit and it's not as efficient as if you if you reduced the amount of core. Uh, now I don't know the exact figure. I don't. I don't know. This is just theoretical, but uh, there there should be a balance. Uh, so you don't want to have too much substrate to too little spawn, because that means that you're not taking advantage of the nutrition because there's not a, a good enough growing medium, aka substrate, enough water, enough structure for to get the most. Uh, ideal amount of mushrooms you could get per flush with that amount of spawn, right? But if you have too much substrate, then as I said, it's going to take a very long time. It's going to use a lot of energy to colonize that substrate because this is, I'm, I'm talking about core, right? So it's non-nutritious, so it's not going to be helping out the mycelium much. Uh, so, you know, you just want to get the right balance. Now, the question is, what is the right balance? Well, for me, I like to use a little heavier on the substrate. Uh, for my shoe boxes, I like to use around, I, I never kept figures, but I would assume it's around like one to three, one to four grain to sub. And I just use straight up core, right? So there, there's no uh, dung or anything. Uh, I like to just keep it simple. So with that, now it takes uh, a little longer to colonize from other people's shoe boxes. But um, the flushes I can get, you know, from one micro quart, uh, a good flush would be an ounce just from one micro quart with that. If I have the proper genetics, I could get a quart, uh, I could get a one ounce dried. And that, that to me is a good yield for a first flush. Now, when I'm going for multi-spore, you know, no matter how good the conditions may be, I might just get, you know, maybe like, like 18 grams or something, you know, uh, maybe less. I think that's pretty much what I wanna say. Now, of course, species, uh, depending on the species, you know, some species like thicker substrates, other species like smaller substrates. Uh, for example, like cool lovers, they like they don't they don't like it thick. Uh, they're a lot more finicky. Now, how about Floridian and Mexican grass lovers? Well, they're they're actually a lot more uh, laid back and easygoing. <laughs> they're like pretty chill mushrooms. 
uh, sort of like core lovers. You could basically fruit them with the same kind of thickness as uh, core, core lovers. Technically, they do like to have a little less and they will need a casing layer. So anyways, back to the core lovers. So yeah, so generally my my uh, substrate thickness for my shoe boxes is around one micro quart to, I could tell you in dry amounts how much core I use. I, I use around 185 grams dried core. So I hydrated it with around 900 uh, milliliters of water, basically just times it by five. But I would not go above that for shoe boxes. That is at the top end. And usually when I'm just looking for genetics or if I'm just looking for mutations or whatever, rather than just pure yield, then I would go for a one to two ratio. So, you know, about half of that. That's how I do it. So in total thickness, it comes up to, I think around like three and a half uh, inches. Actually, just almost exactly three inches. So yeah, that's basically uh, what I wanted to say. Um, so, you know, it's all about finding the right balance. The ratio that has the best of both the lower and a higher spawn to sub ratio will be a one to two spawn to substrate ratio. To really sum it up guys, it's this. The benefit of a lower amount of substrate is that bulk colonization times will be faster and thus you can get to fruiting quicker. The negative of this though is that you will have a lower yield from a flush compared to a grow with more substrate. However, I will reiterate that this is very genetics dependent. Sure, your grow conditions will certainly influence it, but assuming you have the perfect conditions, genetics will have the final say on whether you have a tub filling yield or a sparse one. And I would also like to state that this is only for a flush, not the whole accumulated yield over multiple flushes that I'm talking about. The total yield will not be affected by the amount of substrate you have, that is purely down to the amount of grain you use. What substrate essentially does is it allows the mushrooms to have water to draw from. And because mushrooms are over 90% water content, less water equals less mushrooms in a flush, and more water equals more potential mushrooms in a flush, depending on the genetics, if it can actually make use of all that water. So to put it simply, more water equals more mushrooms, less water equals less mushrooms in a flush. Now, talking about the whole overall yield, then this is what it comes down to. More grain equals more total yield. Less grain equals less total yield. Just don't go below one to one, and I wouldn't go over one to four if you're using just a non-nutritious substrate. All right, guys? So I hope this video was helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So I hope you guys have a great day or night, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Michael File Sage, checking out for now.